Now we are going to introduce internationalization to our client. And for that, we are going to use a library and that library is this one. Here in this repo, we have this documentation and it is explaining how the, the library is working. Now we are going to do this implementation in our application. But first let's install this library. So in the console running npm install or short one is npm i and the library name is swelled-i18n. Now let's run the tests. And since last lecture, there's no change in the commit history, therefore there's nothing to run. Now we are going to use this translation library and we will be adding translation related tests too. But first, let's practice the usage of this one first. First, let's configure this library and let's do this one in the main.js. The main.js is right here in the src folder. And in this module, let's import we will be importing a couple of functions from this Svelte i18n and one of them is add messages and the other one is this init. And let's add messages for language English. And as the translations, we will be passing an object to this add messages and the translation can be added like this. Let's say we will have key for sign up. We will be using this key and in the runtime, the corresponding translation will be visible on the page. And for the English, this sign up is equal to sign space up. And let's run in it with options object, configurations options, and it has initial locale and let's make sure the initial locale is English. Now in sign up page we are using this sign up string and in sign up page we are going to import another function from this swelled swelled i18 n and that function is underscore. For now, we are using this sign up here in the, the header h1 right here. So let's replace this one like this. Now we are going to run a function uh, to get the value for this part. And we do that in curly braces. For now, let's not just focus to this part, but the function execution is like this. This is specific to this uh, case. So dollar sign, underscore, and this is a function and we are passing a parameter to this one. And that parameter is this key. So the key is sign up. Now saving these changes. So we don't have any changes on this page. Now let's add another language and I'm going to add my own language. And for this case, you can go with your own. So I'm adding another messages and this is for my language TR Turkish. And again, I'm going to use the same key that is what we are using in our actual component. But the translation for my language is like this. So we have messages for this English and Turkish. We have same key, but different values assigned to them for different languages. And in our component, we are using those keys and the actual value for this key will be dynamically set based on the locale of the application. And let's do that. Let's change this one. Let's change the locale to TR. 
saving it and here the browser also popping up this one just closing it and here we can see this header is now in Turkish so that's simply how it is working now let's add all the text we are using on this component so the other fields are let's say the the field is username and corresponding English version is this username and we have email which is e dash mail password password and the password repeat password space repeat and let's add the keys to the other translations and this is for the Turkish version now let's use these keys in this page now uh, the sign up is also used in the button right here so the button text is also sign up so instead of the text sign up running the underscore with the, the key in our translation library now we are going to update the labels too so the label for this username is username and this is email this one is password and the last one is password repeat so saving these changes and here we can see the page is updated we have these these translations like this and the button is also updated by the way I need to fix this one for the Turkish so we have our translations right here if we toggle from one language to another here we can see the page texts are updated accordingly let's force the test to run and hitting A for that now we have failures in our tests the tests are broken because this configuration we have here is in this main JS but in the sign up tests we are just rendering this sign up page we are not rendering the main we don't have anything about the main therefore in our tests we don't know anything about the internationalization configuration so for solution let's extract this configuration into its own module so cutting this one from main.js the import of the svelte functions and the add messages and init part so cutting this one and creating a new file let's create a file under a folder and let's call this folder as locale and in this folder let's have i18 and js and pasting the part i copied from there and that's it now in main let's just import this i18n importing i18n from current directory locale i18n and saving the changes the translation part is properly working but the tests are still failing and what we can do here is just like importing this configuration in main.js we can import this one in our tests too so like in sign up page spec here we can import that i18n or since we will be having multiple test modules and we have been doing repeating imports in this setup test we can import this i18n in this one too because jest will be running this one 
initially, which will be importing all the necessary dependencies to the test environment. Therefore, uh, we don't have to be repeating ourselves in each test module by importing this i18 and js. And let's do that. Import from current directory src locale i18 and saving this one. And the tests are passing. Let's do one more change here. Now in this i18 and js, we have these translations right here. Let's extract these objects as separate JSON files. So here in locale folder, let's create two files. And one of them is for English, en JSON, and the other one is for Turkish TR JSON. And here I'm just cutting this object from this English part and pasting it to this en JSON and doing the same thing for the Turkish object, Turkish translation object. And then we have these two files so that we can import Let's say, let's call this one as en from uh, current directory en json and let's import tr. And let's use these JSONs as the object for the add messages. Let's save this. We don't have any problem with the tests, but if we open our um, console for the the development server here here we can see there is an error and that error also tells us what to do about it it is saying that uh, there is this json file and you need this rollup plugin json to import json files in your project so we will do that i will be just kidding this console but first copying this the package here. So here, killing the console, killing the console for the test two. Now I'm running npm install. Again, this is going to be for development dependencies. So as shorthand uh, commands, we can go with the npm i dash d for a development dependency. And uh, the package is The package is installed. Let's update our rollup configuration. Now we are going to use this package and let's import that one as JSON and this from rollup plugin JSON. And we can run this one somewhere here, somewhere here, just like running our local dev. We can run this json like this saving it now running the development server once again running npm run dev and also running the tests once again here we can see the development server is running properly we don't see that error anymore and if we open the browser here we can see we are receiving the page and if we try to change the language from en to tr here we can see the page is updated so the, the configuration is properly working now